Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, today's question comes from Zinc. He asks, what's my opinion on Dushan the Mighty? He isn't a considered a saint, and yes, I know why, but what's your opinion on him and should he become a saint? Uh, thank you for your question, Zinc. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Stefan Dushan, also called Dushan the Mighty, uh, was, um, was a Serbian emperor uh, from uh, 14th century, and he was the first Serbian emperor. He has conquered quite a number of territories uh, for Serbia, mostly at the expense of uh, of Byzantium, and uh, and he is the only member of uh, Nemanjić dynasty who hasn't been canonized a saint. Now. Zinc said that he knows why he wasn't proclaimed a saint, but I'll just share some of my reasons, uh, some of the reasons why he wasn't. Now, of course, there's much, you know, speculation here. Uh, also, th there was a cult of him at one point, but it died out. So one might claim that he was considered a saint in some parts of Serbia, but that didn't, you know. <laughs> that it didn't deliver in the long run and they personally believe that that is the primary way how a uh, church deals with saints who well aren't really saints you know that simply their cult dies out that there is no popular veneration so uh, why he wasn't uh, canonized a saint well first of all he murdered his own father now there there isn't any you know di direct evidence of this but he did imprison his father who was later strangled which is you know a bit convenient then he's the only member of <laughs> Nemanjić dynasty who wanted to be buried in a mausoleum which is very atypical uh, all other members of Nemanjić dynasty were buried in monasteries that they have built during their lifetimes uh, and for this or that reason, uh, Stefan Emanja wasn't uh, wasn't uh, buried in a mausoleum. He was um, he was buried in a monastery of Saint of Holy Archangels near the city of Prizren, which is a former royal city. Um, and today in Serbia we also uh, usually make uh, call it the Imperial City, Tsarski Grad. Um, he also led, you know, wars of conquest, which is a bit of a no-no. Um, I can't, l uh, in keeping up with the theme of my channel of not doing any research, um, I'm not exactly sure if other members of Nemanjić dynasty never actually went to wars of conquest, but it is a folk belief that Stefan Dushan wasn't canonized because of his conquests. Uh, large as they may have been. Um, I think that the primary reason that he wasn't uh, canonized was that he was responsible for a long-lasting and painful schism uh, with uh, the see of Constantinople uh, because um, uh, he elevated the Serbian uh, metropolitan to the rank of the patriarch. Ironically, that patriarch is a saint, so I suppose that <laughs> Stefan Dushan is right now in Hades saying like, what the hell, guys, why? But it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's that. He was an imposing figure. He, uh, he, he was very char um, charming to his contemporaries. He was a powerful, uh, powerful presence. Uh, uh, what I think of him? Well, you know, I personally think that no monarch ever should become, should be, should be canonized. Of course, I am, you know, biased. Uh, that uh, that includes any person in power. So if a president gets canonized, well, good for him. But in all probability, I probably won't be, you know, devoted a whole lot. To that person. Uh, 
I think that uh, Stefan Emanja, uh, Stefan, uh, Stefan Dushan, sorry, uh, suffered from uh, expansionitis, and that is when you conquer a lot of territories that you can't uh, keep. You know, you stretch yourself too thin. Um, that was the case with uh, Alexander the Great, and that was the case uh, with. Um, uh, with uh, Stefan uh, Dushan, um, you know, little by little, uh, and you get the Roman Empire. Stretch yourself too thin, and you get, uh, you get the, you get uh, the case of uh, Alexander the uh, Alexander the Great. Um, that's all that I pretty much uh, know about him. I mean, I know some other details, but, you know, nothing truly, you know, interesting. Uh, oh yeah, he's famous for his codex, um, which which is also known for being very strict, for, like, for a lot of uh, rules in that codex, <laughs> you end up burnt. Uh, but, um, but, you know, that is a typical codex of its time, so, you know... Sometimes in Serbia, uh, when we think that someone should be uh, sternly uh, sternly punished, we simply say uh, Dušan of Zakonik, the Codex of Dušan. Um, also, I want to thank all of you guys for, you know, saying a prayer for my father. He's fine uh, and he's doing well, so, you know, <laughs> no need for further prayers. There are other more, you know, pressing uh, cases. Um, and thanks to St. George, we managed to, uh, to pull ourselves through yesterday. Um, I was, uh, you know, instead of, you know, all of us being in the kitchen for the whole day arguing, as it was a, a tradition, instead it was, you know, mostly hospital, but everything was absolutely perfect in the end. Uh, thanks to St. George, St. George and all of your prayers. So, thanks a bunch. Uh, I finally returned to the gym and I had a thought that uh, what I subjected myself to today, I had to pay for that. While in Middle Ages, in order to subject yourself to it, you had to be accused of witchcraft. So, it is amazing how times and seasons change, you know. Well, that's it for today, uh, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!